Welcome to part two of this statics pulley problem. So in the last part, in the last video, we went over the problem statement as well as the algorithm that we're going to implement. And in this part, we are actually going to write some code and implement that algorithm. So as a quick, quick refresher, we have this system here where we have this pulley. And on one side of the pulley, we have this box or weight of 50 Newtons. And there is a cable attached to this box that is connected to this collar over here that's free to move along this bar right here so it can move left or right and we have this force p that's pulling on this collar to keep this entire system in equilibrium so and the problem specifically wants us to figure out what this p force is for every value of x from zero all the way up to four in increments of 0 0.1 meters. And once we have P forces for all those increments, we want to be able to graph that uh, on a plot. So we'll, we'll graph P versus X on a plot, plot in Python. So, okay, so then we went on to, you know, we drew the free body diagram of the collar. Uh, we figured out our equations of equilibrium. We summed all the forces in the X direction to zero, all the Y direction to zero. Uh, we figured out what our cosine theta value was. It was this x over this square root of x squared plus y squared. And eventually we figured out that our force P is an equation in terms of the tension force as well as our x, our, our distance from the pulley to the force, as well as our y distance, which was the height uh, from the bar to the pulley. And this is where we started writing out our steps for our algorithm. So for our algorithm, the very first thing we need to do is we need to define our input. So we had this start x value, this end x value, that was 0 and 4 respectively. And then we had our increment value uh, labeled as delta x. Our height, our y value was 2 meters, and then our tension was 50. So let's go into our IDE and start uh, defining those inputs. So over here, I'll make a little comment saying define our input. And the first input is going to be our start x, and that is going to start at 0 meters. Uh, our ending x is going to be 4 meters, and then our delta x, the amount that we're incrementing x by, is going to be 0 0.1 meters. Now the next set of input was our y value, or we called it just our height, and that was a value of 2 meters. And then we had the tension force, which was running through the wire, holding up that 50 uh, Newton weight. That is going to be equal to, well, 50 uh, Newtons right here. Okay, awesome. So that takes care of our input. Our next step uh, after our input right here was to create uh, two different lists to store our P values and our X values. So again, we are incrementing from zero to four in increments of 0 0.1. And so we need to calculate the P force for every iteration of X. And we need to keep track of all those forces. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two different lists. They're going to start off as empty lists. And for every P value that we calculate, we're going to append that P force into this P forces list. And we'll also uh, append the X value into this X steps a list. So let's go ahead and define that. So lists for our plot. And I can say that P forces uh, will initialize as an empty list. And then X steps will also initialize as an empty list. And these P forces, those are going to be in Newtons and the steps, those are going to be in meters. Okay, great. So that is our output that we'll use to plot these values. The next step is really the heart of this algorithm. So what we need to do is we need to loop or iterate through each value of x from start to end, and we need to find a value of p for that current value of x. So what I did here is we, we, we got introduced to this uh, thing called a while loop. And a while loop is simply while some condition is true, execute this block of code. So our condition was current x is less than or equal to end x. And our current x is just a variable here that I've initialized to start x. Now start x, uh, as we've defined right here, has a value of 0. 
So when this variable gets created, this current x gets created, that is going to take on a value of whatever start x was. And in this case, it would be zero. So when this loop runs, current x is zero, end x is four, while zero is less than or equal to four, run this block of code. And we had three steps. The first was to calculate p. So we're going to use this current x, we're going to plug that into our formula right here uh, for this x variable. And once we do that, we can take that value of p and then we can append it uh, to this list right here. And then we'll also append that current x value to this x step. And then after that is done, then we need to increment current x by delta x. So initially, this was a value of 0, and then our delta x was 0 0.1. So on the next version of this loop, uh, when this line runs, current x is not going to be 0. It's going to be 0 0.1, right? Because delta x is 0 0.1. And so while 0 0.1 is less than or equal to 4, run this loop. And since that condition is true, it's going to run, and then we're going to calculate another p, uh, and then we'll append both of those values, the p and the current x, to our lists, and then we'll increment current x by delta x, so now it'll be 0 0.2, and you can see that we're incrementing uh, this current x by delta x for every version of this loop, and eventually current x is going to be greater than 4, and this loop is going to stop. So once that loop stops, then we can go ahead and graph uh, p versus x. So let's, let's focus on this while loop for now. So going back to our IDE, uh, let's calculate p for every value of x. So again, this is the heart of the algorithm. This is the main part. So the very first thing I need to do is define that current x value. And that is going to be initialized to start x. And then once that's done, I need to write the while loop. So while current x is less than or equal to the end x value, uh, run those three steps. So again, step one was calculate p. Uh, step two was append p and current x to our lists. And then step three was increment uh, current x by delta x. So let's do these one at a time. Very first thing we need to do is calculate p. Now, p is, again, that formula, and that was our tension force times the uh, value of x divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, in order to use square root, we need to import the math library. And that's how we're going to get access uh, to the square root method. So I'm um, at the very top of this file. I'm going to say uh, import math as m. Again, m is just a shorthand version, uh, so I don't have to write math out here. I can just say m dot square root of x squared plus y squared. So what is x? Well, x is this current x. And my apologies, I should make this current x because we need to calculate p for that current value of x. So again, square root of x squared plus y squared. So current x uh, squared, remember in Python, we use two asterisks to denote the uh, square, and then our y squared. Well, y was this height value. So I can take height, and then I can square it. I'll add those two values together, square root that, and then take current x and, and divide by the denominator, obviously. Uh, once that is multiplied with tension, we get p. Okay, awesome. So once we've calculated p, the next thing we need to do is we need to append p and current x to our lists, and our lists are up here. So for this step, uh, there's kind of two sub-steps, right? So p forces dot append uh, p, and then we need to do x steps dot append. Well, this would be current x. So again, we have an empty list here, p forces. And for every iteration of this loop, we're going to get a value of p that's based off of the current x. And once we calculate that, we need to add it to this p forces list. And the way that we can do that is using this method append. So it's going to take p and it's going to append it or add it to p forces. And similarly, for x steps, we're going to take the current value of x 
and append it or add it to x steps. And then our last step was to increment current x by delta x. And that's as simple as saying current x uh, plus equals delta x. So this is going to take the current value of x or current x. It's going to add delta x, which is 0 0.1, and then it's going to reassign that to current x. Awesome, so that takes care of the while loop. So at the end of this while loop, once this while loop finishes, we should have a list of P forces and a list of X steps. So we can actually try that out here and just say print P forces and then print X steps. Now, if I run this, we should see some values pop up in the console. So let's go ahead and pray that that works. And there you go. This is really, really messy. But what's happening is that in this first array, which starts starts here and it ends, it looks like right there, there's the closing bracket. So these, all these values in this list are the values of P forces for every value of X. Now, if I scroll downwards, you can see that my next list starts here. There's the open bracket and then it ends here. And what this is, is every iteration of x. So it starts at 0, then it goes to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 5, 6, 7, on and on and on, all the way up to 4. This does give us a good amount of values. It, it, it ensures that our while loop is working and that we are getting values for p forces and x steps. Awesome. So the last kind of part of this problem was to plot a graph of P versus X. So I mentioned that we'll use this thing called matplotlib as the library to plot P versus X. So let me show you how to do that right now. So I'll go ahead and clear this console. Uh, we can get rid of these print statements because that was just a test. And I can say uh, plot values for P versus X here. Okay, so how do we plot something in Python? Well, in order to plot something, we need to import another library, and that is the matplotlib library. So at the very top of this file, under this import mathsm, I'm going to say import matplotlib.pyplot as mpt. So again, that's just a shorthand version of writing this whole thing out so that I don't have to write this whole thing out every time I need to reference it. So, okay, how do we plot something? Well. We plot something by saying mpt.plot, and into this plot method, we need to pass a few things. We need to pass the x values as well as the y values. So our x values is going to be our, well, it's going to be the x distances from the pulley all the way up to 4 meters. And that list was this x steps. So back in Python, I'm going to pass in x steps here. And then the second argument is going to be the y values. Now the y values are going to be this p forces, right? If we look at the graph, that is what our y axis is. It's this p in, in units of newtons. So our y value here is going to be p forces. Now, when I plot this, I simply can't just plot this uh, and, and it's, it's actually not gonna show. So, if I try to run this right now, you can see that nothing shows up here. And that might be a little confusing because you're saying, hey, I want to plot this X and Y values. Uh, why is that? Well, Python is just a little weird like that. Once we've entered in this line, the only thing we've done right now is we've just told Python we want to plot this value and this value. But now we need to tell Python, okay, once we've given you the values you need to plot, now go ahead and actually plot it. So the way we can do that is we just call mpt.show, and this is going to show the plot. So if we run this, you can see that in the console, we get this graph right here. Now you can see that the graph is actually not linear. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we go back to our diagram up here, every time we increased x, our p-value also increased, but it didn't increase linearly. In fact, what this plot tells us is that the further we go out on the x-distance, 
the more force is required. However, for every increment, there's less and less and less force required. So that's why this plot starts off like this and then starts becoming sort of parabolic here. So that's great. We've plotted uh, P versus X. However, this graph uh, doesn't really tell us much because the axes aren't labeled. And the line is actually a little, uh, it's probably not the best way to plot these values because again, we're plotting increments of X. So we don't necessarily want to see this interpolated line. We want to see the actual dot values of, of where P force is versus X. So we need to adjust our plot a little bit. So the way we can first write the labels on the axes is we call MPT dot, well, we just say Y label. And this will allow us to label the Y axis. So I'm going to call the Y axis P and I'm going to write Newtons uh, for the units. And then similarly for the X axis, we can do X label. And the name I'm going to give the X axis is going to be X and this is going to be in meters. Now, that's great. What if we run this, uh, run it, okay. Now that we click on the graph, we can see, okay, we have P over here with Newtons and then X over here with meters. Awesome, so now we just need to change this line plot into a dotted plot. So how do we do that? Well, back up here on line 29, when we gave Python the values that we need to uh, plot, we can also optionally give it another argument here. And this argument I'm going to type in as RO. What does this RO value mean? Well, it means that for all these values that we're plotting uh, for this plot, uh, we want to, uh, first, this R stands for red, so it's going to change this line from blue to red, and this O marker here is going to define what our markers are going to look like, or our points. So in this case, O means dots in Python. So R means red, O means dots, so instead of this line graph being just a blue line, instead it's going to be red dots. Okay, so now if we tried to run this, uh, we should see uh, the plot that we're expecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that, and there you go. These dots represent every increment of X or every P force that's required to keep the system in equilibrium for every increment of X. So here's zero, here's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5, and then so on and so forth. So this gives us a better picture of how this P force is behaving for every value of x. And there you go. You've solved your third problem in statics using Python, and you've learned a little something about plotting uh, graphs in Python. So great work.